Today on The Joy of Editing, I'll be comparing the TK Gen Fill Panel with the Generative Expand feature in Photoshop Beta. Which one of these is better? We're going to find out today. Stay tuned. Today on The Joy of Editing with Dave Kelly, I'll be working with the TK Gen Fill Panel. This is my second video utilizing the TK Gen Fill Panel. In today's image, what I'll be doing is adding some more room on the bottom of this image. In other words, I'll be extending this canvas. First off, I'll use the uh, crop tool and use the new generative expand found in Photoshop beta. And then I'll compare it to the TK Gen fill panel with this button right here that says PX with the dash lines around it. We're going to compare the results I get by using these two different methods. Now, one thing I want to say about the TK Gen Fill Panel, it was designed to work with generative fill in Photoshop Beta, which will soon be in Photoshop 2023. I hope that's very soon. It enables us to work with Photoshop's generative AI in unique and special ways. And I'll be highlighting one of those ways with this button right here, which you'll see shortly. But first, let's expand this image with the Crop Tool and Generative Expand. By the way, the TK Gen Fill Panel is absolutely free. To get it, just click on my affiliate link in the description below this video. It'll take you over to Tony Kuiper's web store where you can get the Gen Fill Panel for free. And over there, you're going to find the TK9 plugin for Photoshop and training videos. If you're interested in any of that product, you can use my promo code DK15 and save 15% off your entire purchase. But you don't have to purchase anything. This TK Gen Fill panel is absolutely free. Before I expand this canvas, I'll show you some things I've changed in this image. This is a stock image, by the way. Uh, this first layer here, I used Generative AI to add some, I called it wildflowers. And there is some wildflowers in here, as you can see here. But it matches the scene. And then I added an iguana. Because who doesn't want an iguana in this scene? I thought... An iguana would look good, so I added that, all with generative AI. And then next, I changed the sky, added a new sky, and then I added a lightning strike here. And then I thought, what about another lightning strike here? And so I added another lightning strike. So I think it gives this image a little more visual character. And this is what I like Gen Feel for when you're working with photographs. Sometimes you can just add one or two little elements just to make the image a little bit more interesting. But now let's go ahead and expand this canvas. So I have my crop tool. You can type C to get the crop tool and I'm just gonna click on the canvas. Now I have mine just set up for ratio. I can just do basically a free form crop. And you'll notice uh, right here where it says fill, this is a drop down. Now you have choices here, background, default, generative expand or content aware fill. I'm using Generative Expand. This is new in Photoshop Beta. And what I'm going to do is just pull down on this canvas to somewhere like right around here. And you'll notice uh, we have a prompt area right here. And what we can do, I'm not going to put anything in there. I'm going to let uh, Photoshop figure this out. I'm just going to click Generate. Now, this is really quick. It's not instant, but it takes a little bit of time. Now, it really depends on your internet connection because this is all happening up in the cloud through Adobe's processing. I'll let this go in real time and it's almost done. Okay, so there it is. We do get three results and we can come up here to the contextual taskbar. And if your contextual taskbar isn't open, come up to window and make sure you have this checked on contextual taskbar, okay? It's very important if you want to see that. We can see the different results by clicking right here. There's the second result, and here's the third result. And I think I like the third result the best. We can also toggle through those with the Gen Fill panel. Right now, we're seeing the third. If I click this button, now you're seeing the second. And here is the third. Okay, back to the first. So we could use either the contextual taskbar or the Gen Fill panel, either way. But to use Generative Expand, you must have this contextual taskbar open. I just want to point that out. However, when you're using the TK Gen Fill Panel, most of the time you will never really need this contextual taskbar unless you like it, unless you want to use it. Because you can enter all your prompting right here, but you can't do that for 
generative expand. Now, this result looks really good to me. However, if we zoom into the image, if you look right here, you can clearly see a line across here. Can you see that? And also, you'll notice this top portion before the expansion is a lot more defined than the bottom area. The bottom area has lost a lot of resolution the whole way across there, as you can see. So that, to me, is not so good. Can the TK Gen fill panel do any better? Well, we're going to test that out right now. I have a duplicate of this image. I'm going to click on it right now. So there's that same image, and I'm still using the crop tool. I really don't need the contextual taskbar anymore. So what I'll do is come up here to Window, and I'll just uncheck it because I really don't need it. But I need the crop tool. But this is something very important, and hear me out on this one. See this lock right here? Click on the lock and unlock this layer. That's important because what I want this to be set for in fill, clicking the drop down, we don't want generative expand. We don't want content aware. We want transparent default. That's important. And now what I'll do is I'll just pull down on this crop to add more space on the bottom, just like this. And then we can click the check here to accept that crop. Now, this is going to take longer, but if it takes longer and gives better results, that's not too bad of a thing, is it? The first step is to click on this PX button. And basically what that does for you, see the bullseye right there? If I click, you can see that's a 1024 by 1024 block, which is the resolution that Adobe Firefly uses for generative fill. So that's important. We'll see if we can get a better result with this. Now, you see my cursor now. If I click, left click with my mouse, I can click and drag this anywhere I want. So what I'm going to do is drag it down here to the bottom and just overlap. Make sure it touches the edge at the bottom and overlap right here. And now we have this button right here. See, it looks like a feather. So click on this and this lets you feather your selection. And I like to feather my selections anywhere between 10 to 20 pixels. Click OK. And that'll feather our edges here so we get a nice blend in here, which is kind of nice. And it really helps here when you're generating. So what we'll do next is on the TK Gen Fill panel is we'll click Generate. It'll take the same amount of time that Generative Expand took to fill that whole area in on the bottom. But this will only be a 1024 by 1024 area. And there you can see it. I'll zoom in in a minute so we can see the result here. But I'll add another one first. But I want to show you how this, this uh, PX button works. This is the Marquee tool. You can see the Marquee tool is selected here. Now, if I click, notice where the cursor is. If I click, you'll notice that cursor is in that same position right there. It starts the Marquee at the top left and works down. So if I click down here, I can understand where that marquee is going to drop right there. You see that? And then see the cursor here? You can then move this into position. So that's a marquee tool. And by the way, that sets it up for a 1024 by 1024 size. If you want to reset that to make it just a regular freeform marquee tool, hold your command or control key down and click on that same button. And now we can go ahead and just drag a marquee any size that we want or shape. So that's important. When you click this button again, it resets it back to a 1024 by 1024 pixel block. So I'm going to click like right about here. And there you can see. And now all I need to do is just drag this over a little bit. So I'm overlapping here and here. And now I want to feather that by clicking on this feather button. And I'll feather it 20 pixels. It remembers the last setting that I had here. I'll click OK, and now that's a feathered edge the whole way around that 1024 by 1024 square block. And now I'm not going to fill anything in the prompt. I'll just click Generate, and Photoshop will decide what it should give us here. And remember, we're always going to get three choices. Again, I'm going to leave this in real time, but it's pretty quick. So there's my first choice. Let's click the arrow and see here's our second choice. Here's our third, and you could click Generate again if you want to, but I think I like this one. What I'll do to save time, because you don't want to sit there and watch me fill all these blocks in, I'll go ahead and finish this off until I get to the end here, because I'll just have a short little area to fill in. I'll show you how I do that, 
but I'll fill the rest of this area in. And again, I'm just like moving this into position like here and dragging this into position. And again, I'll use the feather button and feather 20 pixels. Click OK. I'll click generate and we'll let this fill in. But I'm going to pause the video and I'll be back with you in a split second with the rest of the area filled in all but a little space on the edge. And I'm back and I will zoom in, but first let me show you how I handle the edge here. So remember, if I hold my commander control key down, because I don't need a big 1024 by 1024 marquee there. So commander control click PX, and now I can just do a free form like this, okay? And again, I'm gonna feather by clicking on the feather button 20 pixels and click OK. And we'll click generate again and let this finish out. And again, I'm going to leave this in real time so you can see exactly how long it takes. And it's almost there. And then we'll make sure we pick the right one because we'll have three choices. Now, it missed a little edge there. Sometimes it does that. I don't know why. I think it's a bug in Photoshop. But there's my first choice. Here's my second choice. And here is my third choice. And I think I like the third choice. So what I'll do to take care of this little issue over here is get a blank pixel layer. So if you click this button right here, you'll get a blank pixel layer. And what I want to do is grab my remove tool, this tool right here. Make sure you have it set to sample all layers. And what I'll do is just kind of paint down along this edge like this and let that fill in. You see that it just fills right in. Okay, so there it is. So now we can zoom in and take a look. Okay, so now we're zoomed in. Now I'm on the right side of the bottom right hand corner and the original image is right here and everything below that is with the TK Gen fill panel. But I hope you can see that the resolution is a lot better. It's not 100%, but it is really much better than the generative expand was. And we'll compare the two one on top of the other just to see the difference here in a minute but let's just keep going across and examining and again this is where we've expanded down in this area i think right up into about here but the results are looking pretty good again not a hundred percent but i would say ninety percent to ninety five percent depending but i think the results are really good now what you're seeing is a close-up of the generative expand in Photoshop. So this is not the TK Gen Fill, but the generative expand. And I think you can see here that there are a lot of issues here. The resolution on the expanded area is very low and not very convincing. If you see it from a further distance, it's not too bad. But if you get up close, it doesn't look all that good. And now you're looking at what I've done with the TK Gen Fill panel with those 1024 by 1024 marquee blocks and then fill those in. So this is what it looks like. And I'll zoom in even closer so you can inspect it a little bit more. The red arrow you see is the area that I filled in with the TK Gen Fill panel using those 1024 by 1024 blocks. And as you can see here, it has done a much better job. The resolution is a lot closer to the original resolution. And so I'm really happy with the results I'm getting with TK Gen Fill. And I believe that TK Gen Fill clearly is the winner here. I hope you give the TK Gen Fill panel a try. And remember, it's totally free. You can click on my affiliate link in the description below this video. And now I'm zoomed back out. Now this is what Generative Expand has done. And now this is what it looks like after the TK Gen Fill Panel. So again, give the TK Gen Fill Panel a try. Well, there it is. I hope you enjoyed today's comparison between the TK Gen Fill Panel and Generative Expand found in Photoshop Beta. If you enjoyed today's tutorial, please give it a like and share it with your friends. And if you're not yet a subscriber to this channel, please subscribe, click that bell notification icon, and then every time I upload a new tutorial, you'll get notified about it. I want to thank each and every one of you for joining me today in the joy of editing with Dave Kelly. I will see you all right here next time. But until then, happy editing!